hey guys welcome back to spice channel tv thank you for always coming out here if you're joining us for the first time please kindly subscribe and don't forget to give us a thumbs up thank you the fashion secretary general of the apex evil social cultural organization or her name is in debo mazi okechuku is to rule zoro on monday said the outgoing governor of edo states godwin obatiki and other People's Democratic Party PDP chieftains who betrayed the Southeast are losing relevance. And in the wake of the recent gubernatorial elections in Edo State, Ohane Zindibo, the foremost social cultural organization representing the Igbo people, have addressed the implications of political treachery that unfolded within the People's Democratic Party. He said the outcome of the Edo State governorship election had shown that PDP chieftains loyal to the former president Atiku Abubak, to the former presidential candidate Atiku Abubakar are losing their political relevance. He recalled how the Southeast urged the PDP to honor the zoning formula enshrined in the party's constitution, which advocated for an equitable and rational presidency that would duly allow the region to present a candidate for the 2023 presidential election. He said that in the aftermath of the recent Edo election, it became glaringly evident that the political ramifications of betrayal are far-reaching and often unforgivable. So, Ohaneze Ndibo, you know, have talked about the actions of certain political actors that undermined the interest of Southeast within the context of the People's Democratic Party. And in 2022, Ohane is in the Igbo, as the custodians of the collective aspirations of the Igbo people, made a call to the cru- critical stakeholders in the PDP, where they implored them to honor the zoning formula enshrined in the party's constitution, which advocates for an equitable and rotational presidency that would allow the Southeast to present a candidate for the 2023 presidential election. And they noted, that this call was made because it is enshrined in the party's constitution. They made a heartful plea to the esteemed stakeholders within the PDP that they should adhere, you know, they gave them the articulated need for them to adhere to the vo- to the zoning formula, which is a fundamental aspect of the party's constitution, thus granting the Southeast its rightful opportunity to field a candidate for the 2023 presidential election. And this appeal was not met. It wasn't met. Because this appeal was not merely a routine request. It echoed the sentiment of millions of Nigerians who yearned for a political landscape characterized by fairness and inclusivity, where they endorsed the idea of a collaborative governance structure that honors the long-standing agreement between the northern and the southern regions of this country. And despite their appeals, key figures within the PDP, including the former governors Udom Imano, the former governor of Delta State, Ifan Yokoa, the former senator Dino Milai, and Governor Godwin Obasiki, willingly chose to ignore these vital principles. And Ohane Zendibo cautioned, that such political recklessness would not be without repercussions. And their warnings were clear. Straying from the part of governance that respects the aspirations of the Southeast would lead to a significant political fallout for Atiku and his supporters. And the recent defeat of the PDP in Edo gubernatorial elections, particularly under the leadership of the sitting governor of Basiki, serves as a compelling testament to this very principle. It's more of a resounding reminder that karma is an unwavering force, as relentless as time itself, just as it had caught up with others such as Dino Milai during the 2023 Kogi election. It now bears down on Governor Basiki that this outcome has a wider ramifications of betraying the trust and the aspirations of a people yearning for genuine representation. Furthermore, the consequences of political betrayal have not been lost on the former governors Udom Imano, Ifan Yokowa, alongside the former PDP national chairman Ayochi Ayu. These individuals have now found have find themselves 
ensnared in a web of political ir irrelevance, gradually fading from the political discourse they previously dominated. And the attempt to impose their ambitions at the expense of the Southeast's uh, aspirations have accumulated in a staggering loss of influence, leaving them politically marginalized and disconnected from the constituents they once purported to represent. And as we reflect on this sobering, on this uh, sobering reality, they've extended their warmest congratulations to Senator Mondi Okwebolo, the newly elected governor of Edo State, following his compelling victory in the September 21st election, where they urge him to draw valuable lessons from history, emphasizing the importance of prioritizing the welfare of all Edo residents, both indigenous and non-indigenous alike. That is, Teno should be characterized by a commitment to transparency and the protection of lives and properties, a mandate that reflects the trust bestowed upon him by the, by the electorate. However, these unfolding narratives serves as a, great, as a grave warning to those who may contemplate obstructing the aspirations of a southern presidency in 2027 by endorsing a northern candidate. Those who previously sought to sidestep the legitimate entitlement of the South East during the Atiku Abubakar candidacy in 2023 are witnessing their gradual regulation to political obscurity. And this trajectory of this betrayal is clear that this kind of actions carries a weight of consequences that cannot be overlooked. So, INEC finally concluded by making it known that. The Southeast must not be silenced or marginalized in the Nigerian political space because, according to them, Obasiki is reaping from the betrayal he once sold back then when they betrayed the Southeast. They, did, they made sure that a Southeastern candidate did not emerge. Him, alongside Udom Emmanuel, Ifan Yokoa, Dino Milaye, they connived with Atiku Abubakar and gave Atiku the ticket, leaving the Southeast to rot. Now they are facing the consequences of their actions. Guys, what are your thoughts on this? I'm dropping here. Kindly share your thoughts concerning this in the comment section. Thank you.